I also have a lot of friends in Australian cricket who I can tap into their knowledge. So this was where having hotel quarantine really actually helped me. I'm big on making sure I do all my research and really um, not just know the stats, but understand um, the context of those moments and those statistics and those players. So I do a lot of research. <laughs> And the other thing that's interesting is the grounds like the MCG and uh, and uh, the Adelaide Oval. In fact, during the winter, they get converted to play uh, to play AFL, and it's like a full cricket ground with yeah. different dimensions. And it must be some sight at the MCG, especially if you're in the top tier and watching all this happening. As you said, it looks like little people just running here and there. It is. It really is. And sometimes the best way to watch it is from above because you can see the sense of space and the position that we call midfielders, they often run, you know, 15 to 20 kilometres a game um, whilst getting tackled. So it really is a very physical game and on the scale of a, of a cricket ground. So, yeah, it's spectacular. And if you ever get the chance to watch it, I know borders are closed right now, but um, if Indians ever do get the chance, hopefully fingers crossed sooner rather than later to come back again, I highly recommend you watch it and you know on that note i got to show you this and the viewers this is what i picked up at the mcg during my trip in 2015 was really excited about this i get it back home and obviously uh, inflate it and then i see made in india and <laughs> we don't even play this sport and this is a proper afl ball it's made in india i didn't know that you know you actually it's made here and we i'm sure even the people making it have no idea about what they are doing possibly i do, i love the fact that we're yeah made in india um i don't know if it's genuine leather though does it say that it's genuine leather on the top um let me have a look because if it's a if it's a full-on sharon that's genuine leather i'm not uh, sure i think they're uh, still made in australia this may be uh this may be a, a souvenir it's it's the mcg there you go. i got it at the <laughs> museum so, there you go. Stuff, so but I, I do love the fact though that India yeah. is making hoodies. <laughs> yeah, it, it is it is really, really fascinating in that sense. <laughs> and you know, you just spoke about coming to India and uh, you know meeting so many people here working on the IPL. You were there last year. Culturally and even otherwise, how did you adapt? Because you have to learn about the new, uh, about the players, you have to learn about the league, its history, on the spot. So what is the kind of homework that you did and the kind of practices that you have to get ready for an assignment like this? Yeah, so I mean, the good thing is that I've covered cricket in general for 16, 17 years now. So I've got a pretty broad understanding of the Indian players, particularly the top ones, obviously. Um, so that definitely helps. I also have a lot of friends in Australian cricket who I can tap into their knowledge. So this was where having hotel quarantine really actually helped me in the build up because it gave me a week to research, you know, and do the extra time. And I'm big on making sure I do all my research and really um, not just know the stats, but understand um, the context of those moments and those statistics and those players. So I do a lot of research um, and I also have a lot of phone conversations with people who have been a part of it, um, who I'm friends with, as I say, through working in this industry for such a long period of time. So I'll just call different people and pick their brains and um, get a better understanding of why they've picked the players they have or, you know, the different stories behind the different players um, so that I know a little bit about their backgrounds and not just their, you know, the statistics that anyone can look up. So um, I do things like that. And um, yeah, last year was in the UAE as well. So it was obviously, it was a bit different for everyone. So everyone was coming from a little bit of a different base and not knowing how it would work with the bubbles and stuff. So I, I guess that um, evened things out just a little bit for me. Yes. And now that you've covered so many sports, which is possibly your most memorable moment that you've covered. You've seen Australia win the World Cup in 2015. I'm sure there have been many great AFL games, the Australian Open tennis as well. Which, if you have to pick one, okay, or two, which would be the <laughs> top two that you would say, right, this is it, like? I... 
definitely it, it is hard as you say because there are so many that are unique for very different reasons um I will say that I will put the Super Bowl right up there because I never I always wanted to go to the Super Bowl but I never thought I would work on a Super Bowl and so oh, wow. I didn't know this. you've got to tell yeah. me more about this. yeah so um at the start of last year for ESPN Australia New Zealand I went to Miami and worked on the Super Bowl and oh, wow. it was even better than I thought it would ever be the whole experience was phenomenal and I mean to get paid to do that is just like pfft. so um yeah, that, that is right up there. And just given the timing of what's happened to the world since then, um, you know, those sort of crowds and that atmosphere uh, makes it even more special. Um, and I feel privileged and grateful to have done that. The other two, and I know you said narrow it down to two, but the other two that I, I will say, and it's more from an emotional point of view, is first of all, the um the women's world cup final uh last year in 2020 oh, once yeah. again knowing the context of covid and and that that was only days before really the whole world went into lockdown um that was just such a spectacular uh time for for all of us to have experienced that and as a woman in the industry and and these girls a lot of them were friends of mine that I've you know gotten to know over the years Elisa Healy and Elise Perry and Meg Lanning you know being a part of that obviously Elise wasn't playing that day but was still a part of it and even women like Lisa Stalaker and Mel Jones and seeing the emotion and looking up and seeing a packed MCG and um, interviewing people like Billie Jean King and just having this moment of wow you know just I never dreamt that this would happen and interviewing Elisa Healy as we're walking across the MCG after the game and we're both just looking up into the stands and taking it all in and what a moment so I would definitely say that that is right up there for me for emotional reasons and and just the moment in time that it presented um and once again for emotional reasons I would also say the 2015 World Cup once again at the MCG because I had been uh, covering the entire summer that year and it was a long summer and the Indian team was, had, was there for basically four months and that was when Virat Kohli took over as captain for the first time. Um, but it was the summer that, that Phil Hughes died and having covered all of that and being mates with a lot of the guys and knowing Hughesy and watching the emotional toll of everything um, to get to that World Cup. And, and I say this, um, you know, quite often when I'm asked about it, but I think that Australians really, as a community, underestimate how significant that World Cup win was. Yes, it was on home soil, which makes it special. But for me, what will always make that special is having witnessed what those boys went through those months to manage to overcome that, live through it and achieve a World Cup victory um, with the pressure of it being home soil as well. Um, I just think that is one of the greatest sporting achievements in history of sport because of the emotional toll that that the death of Husey took. And so for me, that will always be one of the most special moments I will have as a career, but also in my life. Um, and, you know, the hugging Glenn Maxwell afterwards and, you know, those real emotional moments where, you know how much it took out of them and um, the ecstasy combined with the pain and the loss and all of those things. I just think, yeah, that, that will always be hard to trump for me from a, um, a memorable perspective. You know, and, and you're right. It looks so easy on the outside because once they got going after losing to New Zealand in, uh, in Auckland, after that, just yeah. the way the Aussies got going, it looked simple, but it definitely wasn't. 